no matter how good or bad your past experiences shaped who you are today, understand that and let it sink in. It could be the best thing in the world, or you could have the worst past in the world. Regardless, it made you who you currently are. And unless you embrace it, you will never become the person you wish to become. I want to share a story with you. You see, I used to work at a pawn shop called Cash Converters when I was a kid. And I worked there for a little bit, probably around a year. Now, I don't remember everybody I worked with, but there was one guy named Lee, which honestly was a very funny dude. We got along. We also butt heads. He was like a pretty good confidant. That's besides the point. Literally has nothing to do with the story. I just wanted to share that with you. Now, whenever I open up about little pieces in my past, when I worked at Walmart, when I worked at Cash Converters, when I worked at the movie theater I used to work at, I always get very squirmy, uncomfortable, embarrassed because of the things I did when I was there. But I especially get squirmy, embarrassed, and uncomfortable when I talk about the pawn shop. And the reason why is because I fucked them over pretty bad. And it was honestly the only time I was actually let go from a job. I haven't told you guys that before. It was the only time I was actually fired from a job was at this pawn shop. And the reason why it makes me squirmy and uncomfortable is because not only did I fuck them over, but I was connected to this pawn shop through my family. You see, I don't remember how I got the job. I'm pretty sure it was they were looking for a salesperson. They talked to my dad and the owner was dating my aunt. So they lined it up and I got hired as a sales clerk. I used to call myself a store manager or a floor manager, but let's be fucking real. I wasn't a floor manager or a store manager. The only thing I was managing was my fucking drinking problem. So my jobs at the pawn shop was very simple, clean, open, close, and then the basic stuff of selling on a continual basis. All right. The DVDs, the chairs, the desks, the guitars, the random equipment, the samurai swords, the knives, the jewelry. At one point, my dad actually came in and bought a new ring, all right, a new ring for my mom. It was like an engagement ring slash wedding ring. And because it was so expensive, I actually almost won a pin, a sales pin for closing a certain amount of sales on a monthly basis. Now, I didn't do it because I had no sales sense or like actual awareness to just push myself a little bit more that month to be able to hit that reward. But it was cool at the time. They even put me through training. They gave me a course called like Freeman sales marketing or something like that. So I could get better at sales. So I could learn how to articulate myself, work through the art of persuasion and be able to maneuver through people's objections. It was cool because I learned this around like, I think 18, maybe a little bit younger, 17. It was in that area. But again, I didn't end off with this job well. You see, I worked at this place for around a year. And even though I did pretty goddamn good, like I would sell anywhere from what I remember, two to $4,000 a month worth of product, I was also a piece of shit. Again, guys, when I was a kid, I was not proud of that individual. I had no core values. I didn't operate from a set of principles. And I was always doing things wrong. I was doing things that were continuously pushing me towards a life that was going to be ruined, pushing me towards a life that I was not going to like. So while I worked there and I was selling around two to four thousand dollars worth of product, I was also stealing. I was also taking money from behind the counter. So someone would come up, Daniel would bring me a stack of DVDs, equaling out to twenty dollars, and I would type it into the machine. All right, I'd click the button, the cash register would open. I'd take your money, I'd bag up your DVDs, I'd send you on your way. I would close the till after I slipped out the 20 back into my pocket and I would delete the order on the screen and I would pocket the fucking cash. And they figured it out pretty quickly. Again, I was always high, always drinking, always partying. So I don't even remember the entire conversation. I don't even remember how the firing ended up happening because it wasn't like I went to work and it was a traditional conversation where I sat down like a mature man and got fired. If I'm not mistaken, I started skipping work. I started not going in. I started neglecting my responsibilities as a man, as an integral individual, because I wasn't one back then. And then I got called by my family, my dad or my mom at the time being like, are you stealing? from Uncle Gary, who was the individual dating my aunt at the time. It's not a very good conversation. It was something that made me very uncomfortable. And it's something that I regret to today because I wish I didn't do that. They gave me a shot and I fucked it up. But again, you guys need to realize that no matter how good or how bad the past experiences that you dealt with, that you moved through, that you navigated through, molded you into the individual that you currently are. Even though I am not that person anymore, even though I would never do something like that today, that experience molded a part of me, molded a part of the person you are currently listening to, molded a part of the person that is currently leading thousands of people, millions of people every day. So when I look back, yeah, it makes me like very uncomfortable. I want to go back and just beat the fuck out of that kid. Like put the money back, bro. It's 20 bucks. I would literally use that $20 to go buy lunch or I'd use that $20 to go buy alcohol after work. 
When in reality, if I would have just worked a little bit harder that day, I would make more money at the end of the week to be able to sustain my lifestyle for even longer. But I didn't have any core values. I didn't have any principles. And I operated out of way of a delusion instead of purpose. I get that all of my past experiences molded the individual that is currently speaking to you today. And even though I not, might not be proud of my past, I'm proud of the man that I've become because I've changed immensely. Now, I share that with you because... A lot of you guys act out of alignment with the future goals you want to achieve. A lot of you guys act out of alignment with the person you would like to build in the future. So I want to review seven things that you need to stop doing so you stop ruining your life. I want to share seven things that will help you build a better future for yourself, for your family, for your goals. You see, in the last eight years, I've went from a drug addict, iron worker, broke his shit, thousands of dollars in debt to a seven figure CEO before the age of 30. All right. When I met my wife in 2016, I moved into her 600 square foot apartment, had a busted ass car, $20,000 in debt, two racked up credit cards. And I was still working as an iron worker. Now, seven and a half years later, I've moved her into a $2 million home. We own a brand new 2021 R8. And I make seven figures a year. I have around 30,000 clients. If you guys are going to count the 1500 members we have at our gym as clients, because I do. And then the 1500 members that we currently have in our coaching community. So over the last seven, eight years, I've had a lot of learning experiences and I've accumulated a lot of knowledge that I would like to share with you guys. And that is what's going to go into this list of seven. So get a notebook, pick up your phone and take notes around these breakdown, these things. These are seven things that are going to ruin your life unless you take quick action and pivot away from the direction you are currently heading. Number one is perfectionism. Stop trying to be fucking perfect. Progression over perfection is a new quality, a new statement, a new mantra that you should be embracing. We did actually have this up on our wall in the gym, but then we wanted to paint everything black. So we painted over it and put our home of PT domination because we had to represent the main brand in our gym, in our facility. But again, progression over perfection is something that you need to understand. And it's because aiming for perfection limits your output. It stops you from actually being able to reach the level you want to reach. It stops you from taking action. It stops you from putting work in. It stops you from making certain moves because you overthink everything. Instead, take messy action. Guys, when Brian and myself started our Change Lives Academy, which is our current program where we have... 1400 coaches paying us $500 USD on a monthly basis. Again, with our three levels, we made 840 K last month. We literally built the program in six days, built it, marketed it, launched it in six fucking days. Brian was selling the program on webinars while I was still building it out. We just take messy action. Our entire mantra in PT domination in our business is online entrepreneurship is jump out of the fucking plane and learn how to build the parachute on the way down. Because we understand that perfectionism isn't going to get us anywhere. You got to let go of that mindset. You got to let go of that side of you. Take messy action if you want to grow into the individual you've always wanted to become. Number two, you don't relax. Regardless of what all these gurus say, you cannot work 24 7 and i know some of you guys might be like cool fuck you dude you literally work all the time and you sacrifice so much sleep i get that but throw a middle finger up to me from time to time and understand you do need to rest guys fuck daniel sent me a thumbnail for a youtube video we filmed yesterday at 12 a.m and i literally texted him instantly being like yo bro i respect the hustle i love the hustle this is my type of work ethic you do not need to fucking work until 12 a.m right bro what the fuck you guys up at 12 a.m for? i'm gonna yell at you for because you're not working at midnight i'm asleep dog I don't expect you to be awake. I respect that hustle though, because I'm like that from time to time. I grind my motherfucking ass off, but I also understand that relaxing is necessary. You have to. Sometimes you got to take a step back to take two, three, four, five, six steps forward. It's necessary in order to grow. It's just like your muscles in the gym. You don't build muscle from being in the gym seven days a week. You build muscle from the recovery after the training session itself. Let your body, your mind, your spirit recover so you can continue to grow. Number three is your self-talk. You guys got to check how you speak on a continual basis. I spoke about this in an earlier video, earlier podcast, and on my social media multiple times. Stop using words like busy, can't, and lucky. Stop looking in the mirror and talking down to yourself. I do believe that self-accountability and self-awareness is necessary in order to reach extreme growth. But at the same time, you need to be aware of your self-talk because it fucking matters. If you're always negative towards yourself, if you're always negative towards what you would like to achieve, you will never reach it. So audit your self-talk and be aware of the words that leave your fucking mouth. Four, poor sleep. This is weird coming from me because I only sleep around four to five hours a night. But you also need to realize that that four to five hours is broken down to a T. And when I 
put my hand on that pillow, I'm out instantly. I also track my sleep utilizing an aura ring every single fucking day so I can look at my REM sleep, so I can look if I was actually restful, so I can look at what my catch-up sleep is on Sundays because I do sleep in a little bit longer. It's a weird thing to embrace slash hear from me, but at the end of the day, you need to be aware of your sleep because I get that you're not always going to get eight hours. Sometimes you got to sacrifice sleep in order to see success so you can get closer to your goals, but make sure your sleep is quality. Don't be that person who's in bed just scrolling their fucking phone for hours on end before they go to sleep. And then they put it down finally. Then their alarm goes off and they snooze it and they snooze it and they snooze it and they snooze it. And then they just lay in bed for another fucking hour scrolling on their phone. The only time that you're going to make money or grow in life in your bed is if you're a porn star. So if you ain't, get the fuck out of bed. When you're in bed, focus on sleep. Keep your phone off. Stop staring at the blue light. When you get into bed, maybe use a sound machine or a sleep story off of Calm or Headspace to get you in the zone of sleep. But sleep fucking matters whether you want to believe it or not. The fifth thing that's continuously ruining your life and setting you down a dark path is working nonstop. Just like I said, you got to learn how to relax because if you try to work nonstop, you're not going to be productive. There is a very big difference between being busy and productive. And a lot of you guys are just busy. You work 12 hours a day. 13 hours a day, 15 hours a day towards your goals and your passion. But you're not really getting anything done. You're just doing busy work. You're sitting there scrolling on social media when you should be being social on social media. You're sitting there scrolling on your computer when you should be doing in-depth editing. You should be calling people. You should be booking consultations, doing content creation, anything. There's a very big difference between working and being productive and working just for the sake of working because you want to be busy. You cannot be working all the time. It's ruining your life. It's ruining your productivity. It's ruining your growth. Learn how to take a step back. Guys, I embrace learning how to relax like I just spoke about by understanding that I can't work all the time. So I have work hours. At 6.30 p.m., I do not check my phone anymore for work. I just don't. Because let's be real. It can be dealt with tomorrow. I ain't going to die tomorrow. And if I do, the problem wasn't worth it in the first place. So I'll deal with the problem tomorrow if a fire comes up. I focus on that so I can focus on my family, so I can focus on my health, so I can focus on my mind, so I can eventually focus on my growth and scale to the next level. Six, this is an important one. The sixth thing that's ruining your life and making you look like a mirror image of the shitty past that I embraced, drug addiction, alcoholism, thief from the people who cared about me is saying yes to everything. A lot of you guys are in a bad place right now in your life because you say yes to everything. You say yes to the drinking every weekend. You say yes to that little line of blow. You say yes to a couple Percocets. You say yes to the party. You say yes to the going out and drinking. You say yes to the repetitive dinners on a weekly basis. You say yes to the movie nights on a weekly basis. You say yes to the shit that you know you shouldn't be fucking doing because it's taking you off the path to success. I'm not kidding. My phone is on do not disturb all fucking day. And I don't answer calls from people unless it's Julia, Brian, or Daniel because of the fact that I need to stop saying yes to everything. My notifications are not on. Why? Because those constant notifications are reminders that I need to check in with people and the more people that want my attention, my mental energy, what I have to offer. So I avoid that shit by turning on do not disturb, by turning on airplane mode, by focusing on the task at hand. And when I do get asked, when people do try to drain my mental energy, when people do try to penetrate my brain, my aura, my circle, and it's going to take away from my purpose, my direction my current work ethic towards my goals I say no you gotta learn to say no so you can grow in life no is a powerful word and you don't need to explain it say no more stop saying fucking yes because it's taking you off the path to success and seven is a lack of fucking patience you see I was the thief the drug addict the alcoholic the piece of shit when I was a kid because of my lack of patience I always wanted to be rich I always wanted to be successful I always wanted to be somebody in this life I remember when I was a kid and I used to watch TV and I would see famous people driving their cars I never always used to be like, fuck that guy. Even though I did do that when I was a kid, I was always like, how did they do it? Like, I want to be that person. So when I would work at the job and I would steal TVs and I would steal money and I would steal groceries and I would steal the things, it was because it gave me a rush and made me feel better than I currently was. I wasn't patient enough to embrace a certain amount of core values and principles and work ethic and drive to become that person I wanted to be on TV. A lot of you guys are stuck in this current loop of distress, this current loop of anger, this current loop of a lack of success due to your 
your lack of patience. It's going to take a while for you to change your situation. When I worked at that pawn shop cash converters, I think again, I was around 16 to 18 years old. I am 28 now. It took a decade for me to go from that piece of shit to who I am currently. A decade. Did I know I was going to be here today? Absolutely fucking not. Did I know I didn't want to be that person after I got fired for being that person? Oh, hell yeah. So I started to try to make micro shifts and it took me a decade to become me today. That doesn't mean it's going to take you a decade to change your life. You just got to take messy action once you listen to this fucking video and once you understand that you don't like who you currently see in the mirror. So again, regardless of the experiences that you went through in the past, regardless of what your story was, good or bad, everything that used to happen, everything that has happened has shaped you into the individual you are today. So I know that you might hate that old you because I hate a lot of the old me, but at the same time, I also love a lot of the old me because it made me the man that is currently sitting in front of you today. And understanding those seven things that I just broke down to you, understanding the opposite of those seven things I just broke down to you will help you live a better life. You got to avoid those seven things because they are currently ruining your life. They're currently ruining the future that you've always wanted to have of yourself, that you've always dreamed of. Get away from it. I don't care what you did in the past. I don't care who you were. And I don't care what you're currently doing. If you are currently doing any of the seven things I just broke down, I want you to stop today. This is your mental note. This is your check-in. This is your slap. This is your reminder to pivot. It is never too late to change a story. You are the author of it. You just got to start writing with a different pen.